For a large portion of the remainder of this course, we'll focus on reactions occurring on the surface of solid materials. This is the domain of heterogeneous catalysis. Our focus on the subject stems from its immense practical importance, so heterogeneous catalysts carry out the key reactions that turn crude oil and natural gas into transportation fuels and chemicals. They uh, produce synthetic fertilizers that support nearly half the world's population, and they clean the air we breathe of pollutants. Heterogeneous catalysts will also likely play a key role in a transition away from petrochemical economy and towards a more sustainable future. So in addition to their practical importance, solid surfaces will be a vehicle to understanding chemical reactions at a molecular level. Reactions carried out by solid catalysts will always include elementary steps of adsorption, reaction, and desorption. So for example, for the reaction A plus B reversibly going to C, the catalytic reaction could occur by the following sequence of elementary steps. So we have A adsorbing onto a surface site, which we'll denote by this asterisk, and so we could have reversible adsorption to form this bound A species, which will denote A star. We could also have adsorption of B onto these same sorts of sites to form a bound species. Then we could have a surface reaction between these two adsorbates to form our bound product C and liberate one of those active sites. And then finally, C could desorb from the surface of the catalyst, giving us C in the fluid phase and regenerating an active site. So what this might look like in practice, so we have a catalyst, which maybe it's a metal particle on the surface of some support. So it might look something like this. And so we have A and B in the fluid phase so this adsorption step creates a chemical bond with the uh, catalytic surface. Similarly for B, we could have B basically sticking to the surface of the catalyst, and then the surface reaction forms C, which eventually desorbs uh, to form the product C in the fluid phase. So again, for the notation here, X star denotes an adsorbed species X, star is our or asterisk as our active site. And you can see in this uh, overall reaction that it is not consumed. So these active sites are regenerated uh, at the end of the catalytic cycle. So although catalysts cannot change the overall thermodynamics of a reaction, it can break the thermal process into a series of smaller, more energetically favorable steps. So let's see what this looks like on a reaction coordinate diagram. So let's say we have our reaction A plus B going to C. So the endpoints here are just dictated by the thermodynamics of these reactants and product species. So these cannot be changed um, by the presence of a catalyst. However, the energetic landscape or pathway going from reactants to products is influenced by the presence of a catalyst. So without a catalyst, this might look something like this, where we have to traverse this high energetic barrier to get from reactants to products but the catalytic pathway might break this up into smaller, less energetically uh, taxing steps. And so we'll discuss this sort of sequence of elementary steps for a catalytic reaction and how we can uh, use that mechanism to get to a rate expression. So our first goal will be turning these sequences of elementary steps into a rate that again depends on uh, easily measured variables, so say partial pressures of different species and temperatures. And then from there, we will try to develop a physical and molecular level interpretation of the terms in these rate equations.